guys so i'm here at the universal standard pop-up shop and they are here in houston at the texas wine house texas wine school yeah texas wine school they're here at the texas wine school in houston so we are going to be doing some try on hauls for you guys and i've never actually done any of their clothes I've never worn it, but they have some nice pieces y'all they have a lot going on they have really 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 nice quality pieces so i will be sure to show you guys how they look on me and then we're gonna get some shots they have a model casting going on as well so <laughs> we have some nice bloggers that you guys already probably know we have the real sample size here and we're gonna be taking some shots of them as well so yeah, I have a little in store for you guys and oh also I'm gonna be doing an interview with Alexandra Waldman She's one of the founders of Universal Standards So you guys are gonna get a chance to get to know her a little better and it's gonna be awesome So yeah, you guys stay in tune with what we have going on and I will definitely show you some of the pieces because they are so Nice and they will all be listed in the description so that you guys can start shopping as soon as you see them So yeah This is in a size uh, large because I am a size 20 and it is very comfortable. I'm going to insert a shot of um, Maya holding it, showing you guys what it actually looks like on me from afar. But yeah, um, it's leather in the front, leather in the front, and then it has this um, cotton cloth material in the back and it is very stretchy. It's very comfortable, and it's but it's not like hugging me too tight to where I can't breathe it's not hugging me tight at all like it fits really really good and um again guys all of these items are going to be listed below in the description but yeah and it actually kind of go, go, goes good with these pants but yeah this is the play top it fits really really well guys this is called the rhine sorry this is called the rhine split top and this is in a size large and it is again extremely comfortable this white material and at the middle of my waist is where it starts and then it covers if you're more self-conscious about your belly it covers low and then it also can cover your butt but i'm not that i'm not that um oh, you can go ahead <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not that um concerned about covering it but but yeah this is really 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 comfortable i love the sleeves how it matches the top but yeah this is a size large again um i like this it's very work appropriate and it feels so good it feels so good okay guys i can't tell if you can see here we go okay so this is called the savvy knot top and it is again leather at the front it's very comfortable i got it in a well i'm wearing a size large and in the back it has the spandex material very stretchy um for form fit it's so comfy it's so comfy it's very fashionable and then it has the knot up here at the top of the neck let me see if you guys can see that here it's the knot here at the top and the leather material you can be dressed up with accessories have a little line going diagonal i like this hey guys this is the Taufer cocoon coat it feels very nice and look at the sleeves so this is the end of the coat if you guys can check and see you have the end of the coat and then you have this extra sleeve that you can actually untuck no you're fine, <laughs> no, you're fine. yeah i'm making a video no you're okay no it's okay <laughs> but yeah this is the end of the sleeve that you can untuck if you would like and it actually fits very good i have it in this is a large so it's the 22 24 and I'm 5'6", and it comes to the back of my knee. 
So yeah, this is the Toffer, again, Toffer Cocoon Coat. And it feels very good, it's very warm. Okay guys, this is a nice, beautiful sweater dress. Take a look. Very comfortable, very, very comfortable. And it can come down and cup the um, sleeves a little if you wanted to. And this is a medium. I would probably actually go up a size on this since I'm a 20. This is an 1820, but I would probably go up a little size just to have a little bit more room. But this feels so, so good. It feels so good. Oh my God, Lord, I can't put in words how good this dress feels, guys. And I usually don't like um, short dresses, but this one I do with some high boots. Yeah, definitely check this one out in the description if you like. Okay, guys, this is the Winsett gown, y'all. This is so nice. It feels so good on. I went up a size on this one. It's an extra large and i do not regret it because it feels so good y'all i can't begin to talk about this satin embellishment in the middle oh my goodness just i'm gonna just stop talking and just show the dress and also in the back you have it as well so this is going to be listed in the description box below y'all it's one of my favorites it's so pretty and it's flowy and it makes me feel pretty <laughs> this is the corbell slip pullover and i like that you can unzip hold on let me see if i can do this as i'm showing y'all <laughs> I like how you can unzip these zippers and just have it hanging like this um, but it's a nice feel it feels very good it cuffs over just as well it has this is a size large and um, yeah I love the love 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 the way this fits and I love the color it's really nice so yeah if you like this sweater definitely check out below in the description box um i really like it it's gonna be one of my one of the ones i get hey guys so this is called the regina gown and it is very comfortable one it has um the fabric loose fabric that is supposed to gather over here just don't mind the the wrinkles these are sample dresses and so it has the loose fabric over here that's gathers from under the breast and it is very pretty also we have a split in the back and I'm going to insert an image of Maya showing the dress off totally because I don't think you guys are getting a full vision of what the dress likes because I'm showing you in the mirror. So yeah, this is going to be in the description box below and just check out how it looks on. Alrighty guys, this is the Geneva dress and I, I think you can tell that I'm feeling this color, this olive green. And so it's asymmetric at the bottom. It comes slightly above the knee on the side and drips down below to about my mid calf. This is a size large, this is a large. Yeah, and it just has regular t-shirt sleeves at the top. It's going to be listed in the description below. Okay guys, this is the Misa dress and it's actually my favorite. I love these extra sleeves that tie in the front. It adds a lot of character um, and the hem of the dress I am actually really, really loving. Um, this is a large size. I think the large size is a 22, 24. But yeah, this one is really, really cute. I love, 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 love this dress. And it comes to like a quarter sleeve. Check this out here. And again, here goes the same color. I really like this color. And it's um, very popular in their collection. So yeah, this is going to be in the description below. Check it out. Okay, guys, this is the Mossman skirt. And it has a little asymmetric design here at the knee, if you guys can tell. 
and it's leather in the front nylon in the back so it has some good stretch in it and also I have it paired just to show you guys but um, it's not necessarily me wearing an outfit together but this is the V-Rex just T and this is in a large and it's the V-neck there we go so you guys can see it's a V-neck T so yeah here I like this skirt it's very business like but add some personality to it so yeah check that out in the description box okay guys and for the final item is the Beaufort pants see if you could see the satin lining on the side and then it has a split in the front which is very cute and they are can you see there we go they are stretchy pants with a jogger pull like, but yeah they uh, almost so sorry, but that's, uh, they almost feel like jogger pants but um they have very cute I just really love this satin line I just adds it one it makes me make my hip show <laughs> so yeah and they're very comfortable I have the jogger um, top here and I usually pull my pants up pretty high so yeah they still come up pretty long at the floor um, but yeah these are the Beaufort pants here. So it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. How are you liking it here in Houston so far? It's very, very hot. So far, that's pretty much all we felt because we arrived very late last night and we haven't had a chance to see anything yet. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys going to meet you guys? Today and tomorrow, and then we're on to Dallas. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm not anti. Well, this is my first time in Texas. So, so really? yeah. So, I'm actually so like, I've been really enjoying like just driving mm -hmm. through Texas. And really, I'm just dying to see a little bit more Houston and then Dallas. Oh, oh that's yeah. definitely the lot tonight. Yeah, we're trying to do that. That's good. We wanted to do that. Well, I've, I've been following you guys for a while, and when I got the email about you guys coming to Houston, I was like, one more minute. You're like, oh, wait, yes, yes, I do, yes, I do. <laughs> I was so excited, I was like, yes, 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 I was talking to Sue. And um, so I had such a fun time talking to her about what you guys have been going through, mm -hmm. trying to get this brand mm -hmm. up. Can you tell us a little bit about your your journey as a plus size woman, like even before you created your brain, oh, yeah. what was a lot of the stuff that you had in your closet? Well, I had a lot of clothes, um, <laughs> but um, there didn't, there wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason. It was just whatever fit. Yeah. Um, so you couldn't, or at least I couldn't, um, really pick what I liked. I just had to, like, if, it, if I could pull it on, it was bought because I was a captive audience. So it was part of the captive audience. And I, I tried to get creative because I really always felt like I could keep up with my peers in terms of that modern, simple, easy look. Right. So I would buy like men's clothes because women's clothes were too small and I didn't want to go to plus size stores and then I'd modify them and it was just constantly a struggle. What about that shopping experience? Because I know, I actually read that the, uh, the bio about how you guys, even Polina, started everything up and you took her to the back of the store, right? Mm -hmm. Where um, a it particular... I won't name any names, but yeah. it's a particular department to, store. It was the fifth floor, fourth or fifth floor of the department store, and it was a furniture floor. And it's like there was this little corner where all the plus size stuff was. And you had to pass all these beautifully lit, atmospheric, gorgeous stores full of amazing clothes. Yeah. Until you got to the furniture floor and went into that far corner over there. Um, and that's where I was relegated because of my size. And the, sort of the prevailing feeling is that whatever inconvenience you experience, you deserve wow. because of your size. Right? Like, what if you love fashion? Don't be fat. You know, and we buy into that. We're like, you know, because I remember sitting at a fashion show and thinking to myself. If only, if only I was not like this, I could participate in all of this. But it's not me. It's this whole thing. And that's what we're going to change. 
and I like because I even find myself doing the same thing. Like, even when I look at other bloggers for inspiration, mm -hmm. a lot of the times I look at straight size bloggers mm -hmm. because I'm looking at their clothes, I'm looking exactly. at how much confidence they have in wearing it, and it, it, it and for some reason the industry expects us not to have confidence as a plus size woman or taste, right? It, or taste or a pocket. Or pocketbook. So yep. you said you had to get something that what, just worked, right? So yeah. you did a lot of fast fashion, right? Fast well, I pictures. tried. I tried to avoid it. I mm -hmm. really did. I would modify things. I would buy vintage. I would buy men's clothes. I would modify them. Because, you know, but it's unavoidable, as you say. Um, so even if it wasn't fast fashion per se, you know, so a lot of more like these brands who, who sell to straight size, you know, they license their names out and they create plus size brands, but, you know, the actual architect of that brand has nothing to do with plus size clothing. You know, his name is on it, but that's it. That just allows them to charge you a higher price. So it was very frustrating. Yeah, and it's um, interesting that you say, like, that you used to look at things, like, you, you look at bloggers who aren't plus size, because when people ask me to describe who is the universal standard woman, that's how I describe her. She's the woman who looks at non-plus size, even though she knows she's not, she can't participate. The woman who continues to read Vogue because it's fascinating and beautiful, even though she knows there's nothing in it for her. And that's what the universal standard woman is, and that's a lot of women. We all watch the same shows, we yes. all walk past the same windows. That's me. That's oh, all it of is us, really, yeah. you know? It is, because so, I, you know, it's, I'm glad that you said that because we look at inspiration in so many other ways, and for yeah, some reason we're left out of that. Yes. Yeah. And as, and I don't like when I hear <clears throat> some um, designers like, oh, we'll make it in plus size, but will they buy it? Exactly. And, and it's so insulting. It's so like, wait, okay, we have professional jobs. Yeah. We, we yeah. get education. We have We are 100 million women in the United States. Right. We are the vast majority of women in the United States. Women in the United States. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
guys have any? <laughs> did you guys have any like naysayers? Go, what do you mean you're making a plus size brand? Like, you don't know what you're doing, or people that felt that you weren't going to succeed because you were going into the plus size industry. Nobody thought we weren't going to succeed because we were going to the plus size industry. But there were people who were questioning our sanity for taking something this huge on without any previous experience. Mm -hmm. So they were like, it's a good space, and you know, and it's, yeah, but what the hell are you talking about manufacturing clothes? <laughs> you don't know the first thing about it, and they were right. And we just kind of said, well, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. And ironically, it was our lack of that kind of advice and deep understanding of the industry as it is that allow us to create a brand that's different from what exists now. Because we didn't have any of those preconceived notions. We didn't have any of those, oh, everybody does it like this, so we'll do it like this. Um, we just kind of did what you would do, what anybody would do, if I said to you, okay, go and make yourself a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Without any previous experience, be like, I don't know how to do that. And I'd say, well, just go and make it happen. You start to look at where are t-shirts manufactured, how is a t-shirt made. You would look online about, you know, what constitutes a t-shirt. You would start from those elemental processes, mm -hmm. and one way or another, you would come up with a t-shirt. That's what we do. And you'll come up with a t-shirt that you like. Yes. You know yes. Yeah. Well, that was the idea. Yeah. 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 And again. If we were going to do something, we were going to do it in a way that fixed the problems that we right. had existed. And, it, and I mean, when I say you did this problems, because I'm the person that you talked about earlier, as far as wearing just what was available, and I'm looking at everyone wear certain clothes. I'm like, oh, I want to feel this way. I want to look this way. I want to do this now. And I have to think about the woman that I want to be when I get older. You know, I need to kind of start changing up now. 27. So when I put on that shirt, I think it was the play play shirt, P L A D E. I put on the top. It was leather in the yeah. front. Which uh, uh, the leather in the front. Oh, the leather red. Red. Yeah, the one that I showed. You. I put that on. It was the first item I tried on, and like like I told you, I was like, oh my god, it feels good. And I have not had stuff to feel good. I've had stuff to fit. And a lot of my money goes to fit. Yeah. And I'm just happy to finally come across. And speak to personally a brand that is taking the time to make stuff that I want to wear. For the corporate woman, it's a lot of stuff out there that I can feel good in when I'm sitting at this. You know, it just it just feels good. So, what made you guys go down the route of essential pieces? We thought if you're going to start, let's start at the most practical mm -hmm. beginning. Um, this is why, although we consider ourselves a size inclusive um, brand. We had to choose a sector, so we chose 10 to 28 rather than 0 to 35. Yeah. Even though that's eventually where we're going to go, mm -hmm. we wanted to start with what made the most sense and was the most underserved. Mm -hmm. So um, we just kind of did what we thought made the most sense, um, and that's why we started when we started. Yeah. And I like those because you can them up, you can them down. We thought of it as Lego pieces. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you should be able to buy these simple pieces, click them together effortlessly into a new wardrobe. That's why we have a starter kit. It's eight pieces. You can make two yeah, outfits. I saw that. Yeah, it's the easiest thing to buy. And you should be able to click it into your own pre-existing wardrobe as well. It should be easy. It should be a pleasure. It should be fun. You should be thinking of new ways to wear something old. Mm -hmm. um, and we really believe in that sort of idea of, you know, choose well, buy less, yeah. and then you will look the way you've always wanted to look. Yeah. And we sort of use that kind of French philosophy of dressing, like in France, it doesn't matter if you're in your 20s or in your 50s, if you're dressed well, you can wear the same brand. Yes. yes. And you should always, you should, your clothes should not dictate your, your age, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that's why I hated shopping in those department stores, because right. they were telling me, you have to look like this, mm -hmm. and you kind of think that you're this old, and you have like white flowers, and maybe oh, a peplum, and yeah. maybe a, like, like, you know, I was being told how to dress myself, um, and it's painful, yeah. it's very frustrating. I like how now, like you said, it's not based on age. I know the older I got, the more I learned why I'm wearing what I'm wearing. 
why I need to wear this, why I need to feel this way when I'm wearing it. And it's not just about going in the store and getting something for fifteen dollars, mm -hmm. or going trying to buy a dress on sale by one day for free. You know, it's it's about is this something that's gonna last me? Because I don't have time to shop every couple months. Like I don't have time to kind of try to re up my wardrobe every time the season yeah. changes. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> you just or throw it out after three washes and have to rethink everything again. You know, yes. you're a, a basic piece of clothing. It used to be that, you know, you could wear it your grandmother would pass you her clothes, mm -hmm. like her, her vintage pieces. There's a reason why you can still wear those. There's a reason why there is such a thing as vintage. You will not find any plus size clothes there because it's always been past fashion. It's not transferable. There's no quality. It's made to be thrown out. So, you know, it used to be that, you know, you could go and raid your, your mom's closet and pull out some dress she used to wear when she was in her 20s and go, mm -hmm. oh my god, this is so back now, you know? <laughs> I can't do that anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I like, did you learn a lot of this when you were doing the fashion journalism? Yeah. So when I was writing about fashion, I was writing about capital F fashion, like, mm -hmm. you know, I had a lot of moments myself. Um, because I wrote for Women's Work Daily, I wrote for Vice, I wrote, well, I was the, the fashion editor for a national newspaper, so I had a lot of access. Yeah. And um, I had to interview, um, um, I was about to say Rob Florin, Karl Lagerfeld mm -hmm. at one point, and he came to Tokyo, I was living in Tokyo, yeah. and he came to Tokyo to do a huge Chanel show. And I'm interviewing him for Women's Work Daily, which is incredibly important. Right. And I'm the first journalist in for a one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm like, what am I going to wear? What am I going to wear? Yeah. To an interview with Karl Lagerfeld when I live in Japan. And if he thinks things are bad here. Oh, my God. Like, so <clears throat> I had to go to the Gap mm -hmm. and get an extra large men's shirt. That hurts. It hurts to have to sit in front of, you know, a genius in this field, a legend in a men's gap shirt and try to pull myself together and present myself in the way that I would have liked to be able to present myself. Were you yeah. able to? I had to. I had yeah. a choice. I'm sure it wasn't what I wish it was mm -hmm. because it does affect your self-esteem and you do sort of try to think, oh my God, how are people looking at me and thinking, what the hell is she wearing? Uh, but what, what was I going to do? Am I doing the interview? Of course I was going to do the interview. But it's painful. Yeah. And those are things that you remember. Um, and that's one of the things that I wanted to change. And I'm very grateful that I, I have the opportunity to do so. But you guys did such a great job when you made this line. It speaks so many volumes to the women, like you said, that have just sat and dreamt about wearing pieces that we have never been offered. Mm -hmm. and it brings, nice quality, to it brings quality back to the plus size industry. That's really nice to hear. That's really we actually, like, there's a lot of engineering and physical engineering that goes into our clothes. So even, like, the simplest t-shirt, we make that jersey from the thread up. So we actually make our own fabric in Peru. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, it's the softest cotton in the world. And it has elastane in it. <laughs> so jersey has stretch, so yeah. most brands don't bother putting anything else in it. We put a tiny bit of elastane in it so that it bounces back to its original size. Mm -hmm. Because a bigger body puts more stretch, more strain on the fabric. Yeah. You know, we treat it with enzymes so that it doesn't pill. We use black elastane so that, you know, when you stretch it, it doesn't you don't see that white shininess yeah. to it. Oh, uh, we put a little curve in the bottom so that it doesn't cut you straight across. Mm -hmm. You know, we make stovepipe sleeves so they're not like giant bowling shirt sleeves that always look terrible on everybody. So there are all these little things that go into creating something as simple as a t-shirt that should make you go, when you put it on, you don't see all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You just think, wow, this is a great t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. And the, the, the things that you said are things that, well, like you said, I don't really, as a consumer, there, pay yeah. attention to until it's and even when it's a problem you know the shirt doesn't look right you know it doesn't fit right but then you don't know exactly what it is mm -hmm. but when i tried on that second you talked about the hem going mm -hmm. you're putting it making it out of what curve yeah yeah 
That's exactly what I was looking at. That's the first thing I looked at is how it cupped. It just under has my stomach. exactly. You know what this is? That's what it's supposed to do. And it's, like you know, know, nobody looks good cut straight across. Oh my god! Especially if you have like I have a stomach. Especially if you have one that if you're self conscious about. And sometimes I can't be depends on the diet. You don't want something cutting across the stomach, and you have to kind of feel like you're sucking in, yeah. or kind of hide yourself a little bit. But yeah. with that, even though I can, I sometimes can and cannot see depending on how my position position my body, it feels good and I look good in it, mm -hmm. and it makes me feel confident. Yeah, and I like that. Yeah. But how did you? How did you guys feel when your brand sold out in less than a week? That was um, very surprising. It was extraordinary. We did not have the, like, we didn't know anything about right. anything. So we made our first eight piece collection, which was about 3,000 pieces, which was a lot for us. That it took is. a big risk. And we had like 10 followers on Instagram. There was, there was like nobody following us. We were brand spanking new. Yeah, sold out with 10. So Refinery29 found us somehow because it's a very topical space right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like day two of our existence. Uh, they, they published an article about this new brand called Universal Standard. And we sold out in six days. And Paulina and I just looked at each other and went, what just happened? Um, and that's when we kind of thought, okay time to start thinking about this as a real possibility. Yeah. Because that was sort of proof of concept. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started to make, uh, you know, we made a 35 piece collection after that. And we made these jeans that I always wanted to wear. And we had sold out, and then we had 1,700 people on the waiting list for those jeans. So we thought, okay, I think we're doing something. Even, even though we're groping in the dark, I think we're doing something right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we just kept going, and yeah. you know, we finally hired. Because the first year is just the two of us. Right. We did everything in, in you know on the floor of my one bedroom apartment in New York, <laughs> you know, and uh, eventually we hired our first person. We moved into a, an office, and now we have two offices in New York and in Seattle, with two showrooms, and we're growing. I know, it's really strange sometimes just to hear myself say that and just kind of go, wow, is that real? Like, is that really happening? But I guess it is, yeah. Oh, it's, it's such a good tale story. It also lets these the other designers know that have the question to whether we're going to buy anything or not. Hey, oh, yeah. We're out here. Yeah. We're out here and we're ready. Yeah. <laughs> we're ready. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we get love letters. We get love oh, letters. That is so I mean, sweet. We've, we've had so many incredible um, letters written to us just saying, you know, I'm so glad you're here, I've been waiting for this for such a long time. It is. So it feels good. It, 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 I, I need to write a love letter too because exactly how I <laughs> felt when I tried on the wool coat out there. I am. I really feel like I was going to cry. Yeah. I really feel like I was We have cry. people crying in our show all the time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's so. Clothes are important. Now, this is the armor that you wear into the world. It's like, this is how you present yourself. This is who you're telling the world you are. And when somebody tells you that they're going to make those decisions for you, and they're not going to allow you to look the way you want to look, and they're not going to allow you to tell the story to the world that you want to tell about yourself, it's very frustrating. It's demeaning. You know, so I just had enough. And a lot of people just get up. And they just live in their spots or whatever. You know, like, you can't keep caring. It, it's uncomfortable. You can't keep caring. So you want to do something about it or you stop caring. Right. So what do you guys have coming up? Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. We have... Um, <clears throat> some very exciting things in the world. So uh, a little while ago we launched jewelry, plus size jewelry. So I was sick of, I'm a grown woman, I don't want to wear a ring that I have to squeeze together. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Like looks, that looks like it came out of a cracker deck. Oh my <laughs> Why? 
So we decided to make real jewelry. Like, I mean, it's not gold and silver, it's plated. Mm -hmm. So it's not crazy expensive. It's like, you know, $40 or $60. Right. But it looks like real, proper jewelry. And, you know, a choker that doesn't choke you. Yeah, that actually. Or yeah. sticks up like this because it's not meant to be sitting on a neck as big as yours. Mm -hmm. So it's not just jewelry that's bigger, it's actually made to look native on a bigger body. Right. So the scale is adjusted so that when, when you're wearing a pendant and it's supposed to fall here, it doesn't fall here. Yeah. It falls here. Yes. And your bangles bangle. They don't cut off your circulation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's the so idea. True. You know? And now you're like, okay, if I just get it on. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Okay, it fits. It, it fits, fit. and it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> it is, you I can't tell you how many prints on your face. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or it's pinching where it's supposed to close, mm -hmm. and I just. So we launched that a little while ago, and the media went crazy because they're like, oh, plus size jewelry is now a thing, and we we're so excited, and I'm like. Because people just don't think about these things. It's always been a thing. That's the kind of thing. That's that's always the thing. always been a thing that it's should be thing. existing exactly. for us. And we want to make, I mean, I want to make footwear. Uh, I can't remember the last time I had boots. You know? You, you are freaking to the choir. I, I have mean, the biggest calves that I have to try to same. get them right. And same. just try to get it to bunch up at a certain level to make it look like it should be that way. Yeah. I should be like, we should have And not have to, like, like, you know, I always think that they look like those musketeer boots when they yeah. try to make them big. Yeah. They look ridiculous. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like <laughs> that. There is such a thing as scale. It's mm -hmm. not just about making stuff bigger. There's so little thought that goes into it. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing all kinds of things. Watch this thing. It's going to be so exciting. So, yeah. you said you have a showroom in New York. Yep. And, and, and in Seattle. Seattle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when people need to purchase your clothes, they can either go to your showroom and online. Yeah. So, we're a direct-to-consumer mm -hmm. um, brand, so the best way to buy is online. Mm -hmm. And it gets delivered in lovely packaging to your door uh, very quickly without any cost to you. And returns are also free. Mm -hmm. So, we try to make it as easy as possible. On our website, you can see what this will look like in your size, so you're not just looking at a size 14 or 16 model, like if you're a size 22 or 28 or yeah. whatever it is, or 10, you can click on it and you will see what this garment will look like on your body specifically. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really like it's meant to make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, we try to be as like explicit about the sizing and how it works and you know what how it fits mm -hmm. we do video so that you have some understanding of how it moves on the body mm -hmm. um and yeah the the easiest way is probably on on the website uh, but if you find yourself in seattle or new york mm -hmm. uh, you can make an appointment with our stylist and um we'll be happy to welcome you back well i will definitely be coming back to new york to visit you all and i'm sure <coughs> please do <laughs> Please do, please I'll do. I'll definitely come back to the great city. city. I miss it so much. Oh my god, I just yeah. came back there from uh, the Kirby Con. Oh, did so you go? Yeah. Was it good? It was so much fun. We were on, so yeah, we were on the road. Oh, yeah, so you're still going to be on the road, right? What other cities do you have? Oh, we've got Dallas on day after tomorrow, and then we're going to St. Louis, then we're going to Chicago, D.C., um, I forgot something. Oh, yes, Chicago. Um, between Chicago and DC, we have um, Ohio, something in Ohio. Well, it's on your site, though. It's, it's on, on the, the site. site. It's all yeah. there. And it's then DC, New York. Yeah. And I have to admit, I am looking forward to it. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't blame you. You know, it's a lot. It. But it's been fantastic meeting people. Because we're a direct to consumer friend, so mm -hmm. meeting people face to face is really great. Um, well, it was so nice talking to you. It's I my had pleasure. such a good time talking to you. I learned so much. It's, learned so it's much. an absolute pleasure to meet people who you know, are excited by the brand. It's obviously very important to us. And it keeps the fire burning in the belly you know, to make more stuff and to keep going. Right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's and a pleasure. all of my followers on YouTube and Instagram will definitely know that this is Alex. I thought I told you guys earlier, but just in case if you didn't pop in earlier, this is going to be Alex. She's one of the founders of Universal Standard. And you will be able to check out the clothes that I have tried on for you guys 
and you'll be able to check those out in the description box. So please check it out below. I promise you will not regret it. I have been trying to hold back the tears the whole day because I feel so good in these clothes. So yeah, definitely check them out. We'll talk to you later. Bye.